Hello, hi, and welcome to this week's True Crime Livestream. If you're new here, hi, I'm Fiersona, and I'm your friendly neighborhood VTuber. Neighborhood VTuber, neighborhood true crime VTuber. Ah, yes, me and my intros. Uh, someone, someone should make a compilation of me just failing to say, like, my intro properly. Oh, yes. Okay, but hi, hello, welcome, and... Yeah, again, if you're new here, welcome. You can stop by the chat to say hi, even if you're lurking. And uh, yeah, just remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications uh, to be notified whenever I show up to my little dark corner of the internet with a new episode of True Crime. Also, my throat is just going, my voice is just going, eh. <clears throat> and yes, in these streams, uh, I take special care to remind you guys to follow the rules because uh, we talk about very sensitive topics, uh, sometimes about including violence, uh, graphic descriptions, and strong language. So if you are, you know, sensitive to those kind of stuff, uh, I would uh, I would advise you to leave the stream. But if you're not, if you do still want to, oh, sorry, if you do still want to hear about this case, then stay here, uh, stay with us. And uh, and yeah, let's uh, let me just say hi to the chat first <laughs> before we get right into this case. Uh, I'm just going to say hi to the chat. I see shy wanting to shoot the moon and I'm like, the what? What? Why? What's happening? What happened? Why? Uh, but yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, I don't judge your plans to shoot the moon. I don't. I don't know if you can, but best of luck to you. Whatever the moon did to you. Uh, Gilver, hello, hello, hi, welcome. And Tyron, thank you so much for modding the stream. Uh, Renfield, welcome. Well, hope everyone is doing fine. Yes, I'm doing okay. Uh, whoa, Sona looks very alive. New PC is awesome. Yeah, we. Yeah, I look very alive. Uh, I, I think I showed it in the last stream, but like I can make new expressions, like raise my eyebrows actually, like like this and then I can also I don't know like um, my mouth is just moving in a you know uh, just more <laughs> more options like oh ah e <laughs> finally <laughs> finally I, I thought it was like my mistake I thought I didn't set it like my previous computer and previous um, you know like the well I mean the camera is the same but uh, the, the VTube studio properly but I guess not I guess it was the computer uh, Seba hi and Undead Rabbit, welcome. David Vasquez, hello. Uh, the John Active, hi. Uh, also, a reminder for my patrons, uh, especially like Patreon members, all Patreon members and all channel members. This week, uh, this weekend, we're gonna, I'm gonna open the Minecraft community, Minecraft server, uh, and we're gonna play some Minecraft on stream. Uh, I will be on the call with my Platinum, Ruby, and Diamond tier patrons, but uh everyone in the community everyone in the channel members and in um like on patreon can join uh the server as we play on stream you won't be able to join like not everyone will be able to join the call uh but you know everyone i'm gonna post uh, credentials in the community tab for members and then in uh in discord on discord okay <clears throat> yeah me me playing minecraft definitely good idea i i know what i'm doing uh Galatz, hi. I remember when the news broke of her. Oh, the, you know, about the case. Yes. Uh, I was in a group that was basically bootleg uh, slash gay. Okay, maybe I don't know the lingo. Anyway, uh, she was the hero of the day for shooting YouTube for a video. I'm not gonna spoil the story. Uh, tragic, though. So it wasn't exactly like that. It's gonna be, there's definitely much more to this story. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, without further ado, let me get right into it. Okay, so Nassim Najafi Agdam was born on April 5th, 1979 in Urmia, Iran. Uh, although little is known about her early life, family members describe her as a good kid without any apparent problems. From a very young age, she developed a passion for animals. Relatives of Nassim uh, would later recount that she wouldn't even want to hurt insects, that if she found any inside the house uh, or anywhere near her, uh, she would just basically use a piece of paper to take the insects to the backyard. 
as she grew up, uh, her love for animals only grew uh, stronger and stronger, and she eventually became a vegetarian on her own accord. She was also strongly opposed to wearing clothing made of um, animal products and made a conscious effort to avoid them. Also, IDK Bacon, I'm sorry for breaking the uh, immersion, but IDK Bacon, thank you so much for the donation. I was hoping to watch because I remember today, uh, but I'm gonna have to lurk and listen. No worries, no worries, IDK. Uh, thank you so much for being here anyway, and, uh, and yeah, lurking. Okay, so she was, as I said, strongly opposed to uh, wearing any clothes that were made of animal products and, uh, you know, she would always avoid them. Uh, it is worth noting that her vegetarianism and views about animals were not influenced by her religion or heritage, uh, but by her own beliefs and values. So Nazim, um, Nassim's family belonged to a minority group in Iran called the Persian Azeris. Uh, Azeris, I think. Uh, a group that traces its roots from uh, Azerbaijan. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce. I'm not good at pronouncing Azerbaijan. I think it's Azerbaijan. Uh, okay, so the Persian Azeris came basically from uh, Azerbaijan. And they were also uh, registered members, the, the family, I mean, Nazim's family was uh, registered uh, members of the Baha'i Faith, uh, which is a religion that originated from Iran, but faced a lot of persecution uh, in the Muslim majority country. So they were still a religious minority in Iran. Uh, it's likely because of this that Nazim's family decided to leave Iran to search for a better life. And after spending a year and a half in Turkey, uh, Nazim and her family moved to the United States in 1996 under refugee status. They settled down in San Diego in California, where they hoped for a new start. And when Nazim immigrated to the United States, she was 16 years old. Although she seems to have learned uh, to speak English very well, uh, she never fully assimilated into you know, the local life, uh, she continued to identify as a uh, Persian Azeri and didn't seem to have made any close friends or any relationships outside of her family. So despite challenges um, of adapting to the new country, uh, Nazim found a way to pursue her passion for animals in the United States by protesting. Yeah, I think that's a that's a very popular hobby in, in the United States. That's a very popular hobby in Poland. That's a very popular hobby here. I think that is a overall very popular hobby. Just like, you know, you don't have anything else to do. Go protest. There's always something to protest against, okay? You know, you can... That's, that's the beauty of it. You can find anything to protest against. Uh, so that is what Nazim was doing. She was just... Um, I guess she was just pursuing her beliefs, right? Like, she... Uh, was still very, very much against like animal cruelty. Uh, she was still a vegetarian. She still was trying to uh, make the lives of, fight for the lives of animals. Uh, so she at this point became a vegan and started getting involved in activism against animal cruelty and environmental pollution. Uh, her activism began in uh, the San Diego area around 2008 and uh, she attended events organized by the San Diego Animal Advocates, a nonprofit organization that held anti fur uh, protests and demonstrations at SeaWorld. Uh, Nazim always uh, showed, in a, showed up in a costume, some sort of costume, and her unique sense of style earned her a reputation for being artsy in, you know, in the setting, in the group. Although her fellow activists described her as pretty quiet, shy, and gentle, uh, they also noted that she was somewhat of a loner and she didn't seem to be interested in making friends. And then in 2009, uh, Nazim joined a protest organized by PETA against the use of pigs in the US Marine Corps training exercises for medics. Uh, during the protest, she wore a wig and jeans painted with uh, these like large uh, blood, blood drops. Uh, I was going to say blood clots, but yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you know, you know, never mind. Okay, uh, so she, you know, wore those jeans painted with those large uh, blood drops and holding a sword. Uh, she was 
even interviewed by a reporter from the San Diego Union Tribune. Uh, she told the reporter, quote, for me, animal rights equal human rights, end quote. And for a while, Nazim would continue to attend various protests and events with animal rights groups. And although she was a bit awkward and antisocial, she seemed to be living an active life. Like she was, you know, just pursuing her beliefs, just trying to um, do what she thought was right. Uh, however, out of the blue, like at one point, Nazim changed her phone number. Uh, she basically disappeared. She, she disappeared. She stopped uh, all contact with the animal rights uh, groups and anyone that she had met. Um, through the protests and it is not clear why Nazim stopped uh, all contact with the um, you know with her friends from the well I mean friends acquaintances from the animal rights groups uh, maybe she felt that she didn't fit in actually like after all she didn't fit in uh, or maybe she felt that she wasn't making enough impact by just attending protests like she needed a wider audience she needed to um, get like reach more people not just the local communities. Uh, so whatever her reason was, uh, we do not know. Um, so around that time, she stopped attending animal uh, rights protests. Like, we don't know why she did that. And Nazim shifted her focus on a, to a new project, which was YouTube. In September 19, uh, 2010, Nazim started... Why is it... Oh, hi. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, it's just it's just my mouse just like doing the weird weird stuff. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so uh in September 19, 2010, Nazim started her first YouTube channel called uh Nazim Wonder One. Uh on the channel, she described herself as a Persian Azeri female vegan bodybuilder and animal rights activist. And she later created several other channels as well. In 2013, she created a channel named Nazim Sabs, uh, which roughly translates to uh, Green Nazim in Farsi. The same year, she created another channel called Nazim Handmaids. And then in 2015, she created her fourth channel called uh, Yesil Nazim, which was a channel aimed at Turkish speakers. So Nazim's content mainly uh, aimed at promoting veganism and bringing awareness to uh, animal rights abuse. On top of that, her videos covered a range of topics uh, from exercise and bodybuilding tips to, uh, 50, to like um, music videos, uh, comedy sketches and parodies. She even produced content in 14 different, different languages, which was English, Farsi, uh, Four, sorry, four, not 14, what am I talking about? Four, four. Ah, yes, yes, I am, I am great. This is scuff. Uh, okay, so she created content in four different languages, which was English, Farsi, Turkish, and Azerbaijani. Uh, Nazim was a very prolific um, content creator, but she also had a very, like, let's say, interesting style. Uh, some people would call her content content unique and avant-garde and maybe like quirky, uh, while others would just describe her videos as weird and just straight up cringe. And uh, I actually wanted to show you guys some of the videos of Nazim. Let me just, sorry. <laughs> yes, scuff, because, okay, let me... Uh... Let me just pull up some of the videos of Nazim. Um, I did have them here. Like, you can judge for yourself. It's... It's interesting. Like, it's definitely something. Let me... Let me just pull it up on the... Is it this one? Oh, okay. Mm, da -da 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 -da. Actually, okay. <laughs> Give me a moment, because scuff is happening. I forgot to like, I forgot that I did, this is like a new computer and I didn't add the, uh, the screen, <laughs> the screen capture. I forgot, <laughs> window capture, okay. What the? 
I think it's this one. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. We got it, we got it. We got the... Wow, no. So, it's... You know, her videos are pretty quirky. Um, they're interesting. I'm just gonna, like, pull it in, like, a smaller window. Actually... Actually, I could... I could actually pull it up in a big window. Never mind. Okay, let's watch it in a big window. It's... It's interesting. <laughs> New setup, same old scuff. Yeah, same old scuff. It's okay. So... These are some of the videos. Uh, she's, you know, just let's just watch like a little bit and. Nice to meet you. Can I kiss you? I could show you hidden things. Pain, sadness, hair, crying, sigh of food. Oh my brain, look at that meat. It looks like your next heart attack. Life's a game, wanna play. New job, wife, cell phone. This is all you want. Ain't it funny? Ha 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 ha. I know you hate me, but hey, let's be friends. I can make meat eaters angry in a second. They will tell you I'm insane Cause you know I hate the meat And you hate to change Yeah, it's it's a lot Yeah, it's okay, it's it's a lot You know, the, it, it Like, okay, so actually ironically If she, I think, you know, uh, had things went a different way and she continued to create content i think now she i would i would say like she would be popular i think like now with tiktok and youtube shorts she could do a lot like she you know like because there are like much much worse things out there like much much more cringe content and i don't think i think it's you know it is quirky it is like some to some people it is strange but um like to me it's like i think it's strange i think it's weird i maybe like i wouldn't I wouldn't be a fan but um but i think she would find her audience and i think it's like you know in the era of like TikTok and like much weirder stuff uh i think she could you know she would she could blow up but uh that's not what happened let me actually show you like another one because some some of them are you know there's there's a lot there's a lot of this I don't know if YouTube is gonna ban me for that, but, you know. <clears throat> so it's all about, like, animals. It's all about... Yes, like, she's dancing and she's in these, like, more, uh, like, sexy outfits, but... I guess this one is in a different... Wait. I think this one is in a different language. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, she's talking about veganism. Okay, so she's talking about, like, also probably talking about animals. And, uh, like, in every, like, all of her videos, like, the message is always about animals. Uh, so she does have a, you know, she does have a theme, she does have a niche, she just does these, like, quirky videos. And, you know, it was, it was nothing bad. I guess, I guess, like, it was, you know, it wasn't bad. It was, it was pretty, you know, like a, yeah, like the production. Okay, another thing about her videos that was uh, pretty impressive is that, like, she was doing everything herself on her own. Uh, so, you know, yeah. Okay, so one of Nazim's uh, videos was called, um, sorry, one of Nazim, Nazim's, video, Nazim's uh, videos actually managed to uh, get someone viral, somehow vir like somewhat viral. And the video was uh, titled Meme, oh, okay, I don't know how to read it, but Meme Ballon Lukis, which translates as a boob balloon girl. And okay, so I'm gonna try to show the video if I can. Uh, let's, let's see, that's, that's from Daily Mail. Daily Motion, sorry. So this was... 
سخن از تلویزیون رکلامدارندا یوری و روم اونا اینانی و روم بلونلو ممعمود و اولیو This is like random guy on the left I wanted to show it like this Oh, okay مگر اولا چی تلویزیون یالان سویلیه چی تابلار دا یالان یا زالار هایر اولماز او کلدا او رنگیم کی انسان جهت عطیه اینه ستوی So these are obviously fake boobs I don't know if YouTube is gonna ban me for this. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is the viral video that just kind of, yeah, this is, you know, it's, it's something. It is something. Uh, so, okay, so all in all, Nazim's, like, YouTube channels gained a fairly decent following. Like, all her channels uh, combined had over 10,000 subscribers and uh, 2.3 million views. So, you know, let not don't let the subscriber count fool you. Like, she had a lot of views on her videos because they were so quirky, because they were, yeah, to some they were weird, to some they were cringe, but others were kind of fascinated. And she had a fairly large uh, following in Iran and also uh, among Turkish speakers. Um, at the same time, Nazim also created and managed several uh, social media pages, including Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, and um, yeah, like, and well, I mean, in YouTube, YouTube channels. So that's another thing. Uh, let me just, why is my, <laughs> ah, yes, the scuff, the perpetual scuff. Wait, God damn. All right. Uh, so as I said, like she gained a fairly large following uh, with 16, 16K followers on, on um, Instagram and apparently 6,000 followers on Telegram. Uh, and say what you want about Nazim's uh, YouTube videos. Yeah, they are sometimes like weird, but apparently, as I said, like she did all of her production on her own. Uh, like by herself, uh, including video, music, sound, makeup, editing, etc. Like everything, which I have a lot of respect for, uh, because mainly because you know, like coming from a personal experience, uh, having to basically like do everything on my own at one point, uh, it's it is draining. It's emotionally draining. It's uh, you know, it's a lot of work. Uh, to do everything from scratch by yourself and I can tell you, you know, it's tough and it's super tiring. Uh, of course, of course, Nazim's quest for internet fame didn't come without some downsides. Due to her unique uh, style of content, many people only ridiculed Nazim uh, for her views and her weird videos and some called her crazy and asked if she had any mental illness. However, Nazim would always stand up for herself. In one video, she responded to her internet haters saying, uh, I don't have, quote, I don't have any special mental or, or physical disease, but I live on a planet filled with disease, disorders, perversions, and injustices. So, yeah, I mean, that was... You know, it wasn't, it was, she was, she was still strong. Like she was standing up for herself. She didn't let the haters get to her. Okay. Also, excuse me. Let me, let me just take a short break, very short break. Cause I have to, uh, you know, set something up. I don't know why my, my stupid <laughs> stream deck is not working. Why? <laughs> why is it not working? Why? Okay. Maybe even... Is it because I played that the video? Cursed videos? Okay. Let me just... Well, damn. Can you blame them? I mean, yeah, like her... Okay, listen. Yes, her videos are quirky. But it's not like she was doing anything wrong. Like she was... Like, like there's no like more quirky and more cringe videos out there. It's... Yeah, it was strange, but it was just, it's a lot to take in, okay? So for some reason, for some people, yes, it's a lot to, like, her videos are definitely a lot to take in, but I don't think, I think she would find her audience, so I don't think she should be, like, vilified or, yeah, like, you know, comments, you know, criticism comes from, with different tone. 
Some people are like actually give you constructive criticism. Some people give you positive feedback and some are just haters. And you know, that's, that's always going to be the case about social media. There's always going to be haters. Uh, okay. My stupid, stupid. Why? Okay. Excuse me for a moment. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to like, yeah, scuff. Uh, scream deck. I don't know why my okay. I have to restart the stream deck because it's stupid. Ah, the scuff, the scuff as always. Yeah, that's not. Oh, okay. Is it? Come on. <laughs> oh, also, I didn't play my uh, spooky music. Spooky music is back. So what, she hated the haters, basically? Yeah, I mean, she responded, you know, like she was just standing up for herself, which is not a not a bad thing. Uh, da -da -da. Oh, she's, yeah, the, you know. So you're, you'll see, you'll see what happens. It's, um, it's a lot. You know, that's, yeah, a lot happened. Okay, never mind. You know what, you know what, we're gonna make it work. It's just gonna, it's just gonna be weird. But, uh, you know, some of the, some of the slides are gonna be weird. Anyway. Okay, so, well, why? Okay, so as Nazim started working uh, on her online content full time, she seemed very, fairly productive, and things seemed to be going like relatively well for her. Her YouTube channel, where uh, was like the channels, all all the channels that she created were making uh, her some income, uh, but sources kind of vary. So some sources say that it was probably around a uh, hundred eighty dollars. Um, per month, while other sources claim that she could have earned as much as $800 per month. Uh, though this wasn't a lot of, like, a whole lot of money for some, it was nevertheless, like, I think it was still decent, um, and definitely, definitely a lot for, like, a smaller content creator. However, in 2016, Nazim's world would start to turn upside down. During this time, YouTube made a lot of changes to their algorithm, uh, with, which basically changed the way the videos were being recommended to viewers and the way that they were being monetized. Uh, YouTube put, um, also put more restrictions, which would make it more difficult for smaller creators, for smaller channels to uh, get views or earn money from advertisements. As a result, Nazim started to notice a huge drop in her views and subscribers in her YouTube channels, and her ad revenue was taking a major hit uh, from YouTube as well. So then, when she was like angry, desperate, she started to post online frequently about this situation, uh, sharing images of her YouTube ana analytics page and claiming that uh, YouTube was filtering and demonetizing her channels constantly. Uh, Nazim would also con contact YouTube support in order to get to the bottom of why she was being demon demonetized. And one of the reasons she was told uh, was that YouTube had put an age restriction and uh, on her exercise videos especially, as they were too quote-unquote racy. Uh, however, this explanation only made Nazim more upset. Understandably, she didn't feel like, uh, you know, her outfits in her videos were um, like too much or they were like too sexy, uh, they weren't revealing and she felt that it was unfair that her videos, like the videos by celebrities like Miley Cyrus or Nicki Minaj, uh, which they were way too, like way more revealing, way worse than her videos. And those videos were not demonetized or not age restricted. So like they were not treated the same way. Um, and as her YouTube views and revenue continued to drop, uh, Nazim became in increasingly paranoid and vocal online. Uh, she literally believed that YouTube employees were targeting her 
for her like vegan and animal rights views, uh, she began to have serious doubts whether or not about like whether or not there was free speech in the United States. And then on her website, she posted this rant. Um, and one of the quotes is, quote, beware, no, be aware, there is no free speech in real world and you will be su uh, suppressed for telling the truth that is not supported by the system. Videos of targeted users are filtered and merely relegated so, so that people can hardly see their videos. There is no equal growth opportunity on YouTube or any other video sharing site. Your channel will grow. Um, your channel will grow if they want. If they want to. End quote. So that's basically the quote. Uh, okay. So wait. Okay. Uh, then in 2018, something would happen, and that would be the nail in the coffin to Nazim's YouTube career and many others. Because this fucker, this motherfucker, this something was that motherfucker. As you may remember, in January 2018. Logan, Logan Paul, I don't even care that I didn't pronounce his name right. Okay, so Logan Paul uh, caused a huge scandal when he posted a video on YouTube showing a supposed suicide victim in Aokigahara Forest in Japan. In response to the Logan Paul scandal, uh, YouTube basically revised their policies again, which added even more restrictions on what content could be monetized, which disproportionately hurt smaller channels. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> okay, so unfortunately, all of Nazim's channels would take another big hit uh, in terms of viewership and revenue. And as a result, uh, she became increasingly as unstable and her anger towards uh, YouTube started to basically spill over in into the real world. Ah, uh, man. Okay, let me take a short break here uh, because I'm gonna I'm gonna just read some of the chats. Uh, let me also let me just pull up something else. I need to pull up one more thing, which I forgot, <laughs> which is my fault. But uh, but yeah, let me see. Uh, where are my manners? Hi Sona. Hi KB. Hello. How are you doing? Let me let me see. I had it here. Uh, perpetual scuff. Uh, okay. I got that. I got it. I got it. I got it. All right. Okay, so we got... We're back. Why is my... Anyway. Why is it? Oh, okay. Let me just do this. Ah! No. <laughs> ah, scuff as always. Okay, so back to the case. So you say she was losing view. Well, I mean, you know, she was, yeah, she was being increasingly paranoid. She was, uh, you know, posting a lot about it online. She was seeing, like, conspiracy theories, like, conspiracies everywhere about YouTube and uh, their, you know, their treatment of smaller creators or treatment of creators in general, general, and she was, uh, you know, starting to doubt because of it. She was starting to doubt uh, whether or not there was like actually free speech in uh, the United States. Uh, so instead of just venting online, Nazim would go on the streets with signs in protest of YouTube. Uh, she would also frequently complain to her family about how much she hated YouTube and how uh, YouTube was, uh, quote, ruining her life. Unsurprisingly, uh, her relationship with her family became very, very strained. Uh, so much so, eventually, that um, like she moved out of her parents' home in uh, Manaphy, uh, California. And she moved in uh, with her 19-year-old... 19? 90-year-old... <laughs> I love it. I love 19-year-old grandmas. Oh my god, that's such a bad... Oh my god, what... Ow. Man, that sounded bad. 90-year-old uh, grandma in uh, Riverside County near San Diego. 
Ignore me. <laughs> Ignore what I'm saying. Oh my god, this is so bad. Um, this this stream is so bad. So so bad. Oof. <laughs> Oh my god, I didn't mean it that way. This is not that's not that's not how it's so bad. Okay, I don't know why why I said that. I don't know how I said that. This is miss I misspoke. Misspoke. Many YouTubers didn't want didn't went down this path. Sheesh damn oh no! Sona no I'm sorry. <laughs> oh this marks the end of my YouTube career. Thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, thank you so much for being with me along the way. Tomorrow is my graduation. You know what? Let's make this my graduation stream. That's it. <laughs> I am, I am, yeah. Might as well just start, might as well just like shop for a coffin. Uh, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Bro, it could be worse. Yeah, no. Ah! <laughs> Everyone's just like, ah, Sona, no. Well, Sona, really? really? Shut up. I, said, <laughs> I heard 19. No, I almost said, like, I said kind of 19. And I was just like, that was that was a mistake. Sona is a lolicon. No, no, I am not. I am not. I am not. Definitely not. <clears throat> Fail. And this was only the beginning. <laughs> ah, oh, my God. Sona coming out. No, 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 no. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, so she moved in. Let's let's forget about this whole situation. You know, let's erase it from the internet. I'm gonna I'm gonna edit this video and like edit the stream and just like remove. <laughs> remove this part. Ah! Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let me just have a drink. Take a sip of my drink. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, then, so she moves in with her 90, 90, 90. I am just stating the fact. I'm just, you know, clarifying. 90, 90 year old grandmother in Riverside County in uh, near San Diego. Then, on January 16th, 2018, Nazim would make a decision that would forever change the direction of her life. She went and bought a gun. A 9mm Smith and Wes and Wesson uh, semi-automatic pistol. So she got a firearm. And then on April 2nd, uh, 2018, Nazim's family called police and reported that she was missing because she hadn't answered her phone for two days. <clears throat> Sorry. So Nazim's father, uh, Ismail Agdam, um, told the police that they were having problems at home and, um, you know, they were concerned about her well-being. Uh, but he didn't mention anything about Nazim being a potential threat. It should be noted that at this point, uh, no one, like no one in Nazim's family knew that she had bought a gun. Uh, so they didn't actually have a reason to suspect what she was planning to do. And then on Tuesday, April 3rd, uh, sorry, on Tuesday, April 3rd, 2018, at 1.40 a.m., uh, police officers found Nazim sleeping in her car in a Walmart parking lot in the city of Mountain View, uh, which is 25 miles away south of YouTube headquarters. And I actually have a full body cam uh, video recording of the police officer's like encounter with Nazim. Uh, and I can show it to you guys, I hope, you know, like, I think it should be fine. Um, we're just, you know what, like, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna show you guys the moment when they, uh, approached her car and, like, they, uh, actually talked to Nazim. So let's, let me just, um, find this and away. Okay. So this is the body cam footage. It's, um, it might not be... Okay, let me, let me actually, I right, pull it up like this, cause, cause the video. Okay, so the video, the size of the video is kind of weird. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I guess because it's like old, old size or something. It's kind of weird, a weird size. So let me just play it like this. Okay. Yeah, like, so this is where they, 
you know, realize that she's in um, inside the car and she, okay, so she opens the car. And it's gonna be kind of a... Oh shit, wait. Your family was worried about you. <laughs> I didn't play the sound. Oh my god, yes. Yes, I forgot the sound. It's okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Whoops. Alright, well now now you can now you can hear the sound at least. I guess they called San Diego Police Department and reported you missing. Oh, you didn't tell your parents or, any, or family or anything? Did you tell anybody where you went? Did you tell anybody where you went? Ha! <laughs> okay. As always, scuffed. Have they tried calling you? No, I don't Yo, you don't have a phone? Or you didn't answer? <laughs> I'm sorry! I love how everyone's just like, wait, there was a sound? There was sound? Yeah, but I'm I'm an idiot, so I didn't, I didn't actually like the sound. <laughs> oh... Uh, Welcome to my streams. It's great here. It's great. You can expect scuff. Okay. Uh, there was supposed to be sound. Yes, there was supposed to be sound. Uh, okay. So they talk to her. Uh, you know, like I'm, we're just gonna finish watching this uh, interaction because it's very interesting. Did they try calling you? My main point that I used to like to call to them. I left it there. I didn't leave. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's legit, you know, her, you yeah, her reasons are legit. You have a phone? Okay. Do you mind if, do you mind if I have it? I won't give it to them. What? Do you mind if I, like, why, why would you ask to, oh. Oh, the number. You can probably find it on your phone. So she gives him the Are you taking phone? any type of medication at all? Oh, okay. No. Are you supposed to take medication? No. Okay. okay. You don't want to hurt yourself, do you? Or you don't want to hurt anybody else? You don't want to commit suicide or anything like that, right? Okay. Nice question. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just, I mean, you Are know, they ask the right questions. No? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Do you have any friends or anybody out here? No? So where did you go on your from San Diego? It didn't take you a, a month to get here, did it? No. Did it take it didn't take you a month to get here, did it? No, I left yesterday morning and at night I was here. Oh, okay. So you left yesterday. Oh just two days ago. Yeah, I for some reason I thought it was Oh, you're Thursday right. March. Okay, March 31st. okay, yeah, you're right, March thirty first. Okay. Okay. And then you just drove straight here? Why Mountain View? I mean, I know yeah, so like, 
See, so like they, okay, so they are asking the right questions and, uh, you know, they, but the problem is like they didn't, um, like in summary, okay, so let me just summarize. So during the uh, police officers, like 20, 30 minute interaction with uh, Nazim, like she told them that she left home because she had a conflict with her father and she didn't want to be contacted by her family. So obviously that's why the, the officer says like, oh, can I have... Uh, that number of yours so that you know like for if if there's any more um you know like reports of you missing i can just like tell people like no she's you know we can we can check in with you uh she's not missing you know we we did check in uh but you know that's why the, the officer did not give him give um like he told her basically like that he wouldn't give her number to her family and uh yeah, but, you know, like seeing, you know, like the, in, during that interaction, like Nazim was very calm and cooperative. And so the police didn't see, didn't find the reason to believe that she would be a harm to herself or others. Uh, and they didn't contact Nazim's parents. Uh, so, like, Well, no, okay. So they didn't give Nazim's parents Nazim's new number, but they did contact the family to say, uh, to inform them that she was actually okay. Um, and... What happened? Thanks. Oh, okay. Basically, when things don't go according to plan, chief. Yeah! Okay, so, however, when Nazim's family learned where she was, like, where she was found, and that she was in Mountain View, they were quite surprised and started to suspect something. So, Nazim's brother, uh, Sharan Agdam, googled the location of Mountain View, and he re realized something. So he realized how close Mountain View was to YouTube headquarters. Because, yeah, it's pretty close. And alarmed, uh, Sharon and his, and his father called Mountain View police again at around 3 a.m. that night. Uh, they informed the police that Nazim had previously expressed anger towards YouTube and you can see like it's it's so close you know like she was uh, she was found sleeping in her car here and then uh, YouTube uh, San Bruno headquarters were you know here uh, okay okay so uh, so they call you know the police and they would inform them that Nazim was like expressing her uh, you know dislike for YouTube, you know, she was frustrated with YouTube and and so like they were afraid that Nazim would be headed towards YouTube headquarters and again, you know, the mounted police uh, promised them that they would keep an eye on Nazim. Uh, despite their promise, uh, it turned out that the police would not do anything to prevent the tragedy that would uh, that was about to unfold. And then later around mid-morning, Nazim drove over 30 miles um to the jackson arms gun range which is right here like right here in uh, number two uh so she would drive to uh the gun ra range and uh basically northwest of youtube's headquarters in san bruno california and there allegedly uh she practiced shooting her firearm uh after she finished she got in her car and drove towards youtube headquarters more than 1,100 employees uh, worked at YouTube headquarters at the time, and employees there uh, included included engineers, sales teams, and content creators. Uh, when Nazim arrived at YouTube headquarters, it was around noon, uh, so there were quite a lot of people hanging around the campus uh, during lunchtime. Uh, Nazim parked her car in an exterior parking gar garage next to uh, the headquarters. Then she somehow managed to enter the campus on foot without being confronted by any security. Yeah, good job, YouTube. Top-notch security. I hope they've learned their lesson and, you know, they actually have security there. Ah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> but, uh... Eh. Yeah, very, very awkward. Um... Okay, so as I said, like she basically walked in to the YouTube headquarters without any sort of confrontation from the security and she continued to walk towards an outdoor patio uh, where there were several YouTube employees and then she fired her gun. 
As people fled the building, people heard Nazim yelling out loud, uh, quote, come at me or come get me. And then at 12.46 uh, p.m., the San Diego Police Department received reports of an active shooter on the premises and they sprang into action. Uh, police arrived on the scene only two minutes after the initial reports and immediately began to uh, search the area. As they, as, they sorry, as they searched the premises, the police found three people who had been shot and quickly transported them to the hospital. Uh, they continued their search and in the courtyard, they found Nazim Agdam's lifeless body. She had actually pointed her gun to her heart and taken her own life. The chaos was over, but it ended in tragedy, basically. Luckily, uh, all, all of the shooting, like the victims managed to survive. Uh, two of the three victims were released from hospital that same evening. And the third victim was admitted to the hospital in critical condition, but managed to recover to a uh, fair condition several days later and eventually made a full recovery. Uh, when the coroner exam examined Nazim's body, they did not find any alcohol or drugs in her system. Um, tragically, the day after the shooting would actually be would actually have been Nazim's 39th birthday. And as her father would tell uh, later tell reporters, it's as if, quote, she she chose the day to die the day she came, end quote. So needless to say, uh, the whole world was shocked by the shooting at the YouTube headquarters. Uh, however, no one was as shocked as Nazim's family, who just couldn't even imagine anything that, you know, like this ever happening. They always knew that uh, Nazim is being kind of like, they, they always knew Nazim as this gentle soul, you know, they thought she was incapable of any violence and they said that she had no history of mental illness uh, herself like at all uh, no history of violence especially since you know she was fighting for animals and she was you know they knew her as this person who was like very gentle to animals she always tries to protect them and so this was a major shock so then nazim's father uh, ismail uh, agdam said this uh, when interviewed by the reporters quote she never hurt one animal, one ant. I don't know why she did this. I apologize to all the US, uh, US people, uh, all the humans. I apologize. I am sorry. I can't believe it. Now, one of the biggest questions um, I have to ask is, like, why wasn't the shooting prevented even though the police were warned and the, the police like had found Nazim hours before she was about to head to YouTube headquarters. They found her in the area. They knew what was happening. Well, they were also informed. Okay, initially they didn't know uh, about like Nazim's motivations or like her, her frustrations with the YouTube, like with YouTube headquarters or with YouTube. Um, but then, you know, the same night they were informed by the family like, hey, she is frustrated she is angry with youtube this you know might might end badly please check on her uh please make sure to you know like keep checking on her and and just keep an eye out and to prevent it and yeah like uh, she was basically 25 miles away from the headquarters and um and they were informed but they did nothing and but in their defense uh the mountain view police issued this statement let me just read it. Quote, at no point during our roughly 20 minute interaction with, uh, with her, with Nazim, did she mention anything about YouTube. If she was upset with them or that she had planned to harm herself or others. Throughout our entire interaction with her, uh, she was calm and cooperative. Her father called us back to let us know that she made a series of vegan videos uh, for her channel on YouTube and that the company had rec recently done something to her videos that had caused her to become upset. At no point did her father or brother mention anything about potential acts of violence or a possibility of Agdam lashing out as a result of her issues with uh, her YouTube videos. They remained calm throughout the second phone call." End quote. So essentially what the police is saying uh, was that they didn't find anything suspicious about Nazim and they somewhat blamed the family 
for like not mentioning anything about Nazim being violent even though like the family did claim that during the call like they did tell the police that hey we are worried you know she's very angry with YouTube please check on her you know we're worried about like what she's gonna do especially if she's um if she's there if she's like in the very close to the headquarters uh so you know well I mean okay well, they, they did, like, according to the family, like, they did mention that they were worried that she may be going to YouTube to start a fight. Uh, so maybe the police didn't take it that seriously. They were like, well, a fight, you, you know, if she's going to go there and just, like, make her complaints or, you know, complain about it or, or whatever, like, that's, you know, and as long as it doesn't escalate, she doesn't seem to be uh, violent, she doesn't seem to be dangerous. So again, they didn't have... I guess the police didn't have the reason to like search her car for a gun and they were not aware that she had bought a gun uh so that's you know that's pretty much how it ended and well it's a sad case it's a very it's especially sad because well i mean obviously because she she was not she didn't seem like a person like she actually seemed like a person who would you know take care for the animals care for li living things uh, but then YouTube kind of turned her uh, paranoid and turned her into like you know angered her a lot uh, with their with their changes and it's just so especially sad that she did it right before her birthday. Uh, she went to YouTube headquarters to complain. No, she went to YouTube headquarters. Well, I mean you know with a gun, so this it was very um, you know very drastic form of complaint don't do that ever uh but yeah that's uh that's pretty much it for nazim's case and honestly i find it like really really sad that she did it right before her birthday i i think that's the that's the worst part that's the like heartbreaking part i don't know to me like it just it just seems like so like so tragic and you know i'm sorry to the like nazim's family and um you know youtube I, I feel it, you know, I, I feel it, like, I kind of could, can relate to, like, what she, okay, I started my YouTube channel, like, bef like, after, after the whole, like, Logan Paul drama was happening, after the whole scandal, and the whole change in the policy, so, uh, you know, I didn't have the experience of, like, oh, okay, my, how my videos would be performing before that change, and how they were performing after, uh, but, you know, on that level of being a small content creator and I can relate to her like, yeah, like and doing everything on my own, like uh, at the beginning, at least. Uh, yes, it's, you know, I can understand why she would be frustrated. She's like, oh, I'm working here. I'm working my ass off. I'm creating all those videos, everything, uh, every step of the production. I'm doing it on my own. And my videos were kind of you know, gaining traction, I, I was getting, like, I was growing, and suddenly YouTube changes the whole, like, it's, its entire core, and, and now it hits, like, yes, it hit the big content creators somewhat, but they were still making a lot of money, they were still making views, obviously, um, but small content creators suddenly were hit, and yeah, like, it was, you know, it was a significant drop, and it's not only Nazim's channel, right, like, it wasn't her channel specifically, it was just, like, Everyone that's smaller and doesn't uh, go viral. Don't go to YouTube with, with violence. Go it. Go to it peacefully. Yeah, just that's the lesson. Don't go anywhere with uh, violent, violent intent. Okay. Don't go anywhere with uh, to anyone. And don't you know if you even if you want to argue with someone, don't do it with the intent of violence ever. Do it with uh, you know reasonable arguments and just you know respect mutual mutual respect i always like even if i see like i always say that like i always think that hey even if i don't agree with someone uh if i'm frustrated with someone i try to hear their side um well i mean obviously this is a different situation this is uh, this is a situation of the company like f screwing everyone over uh, like smaller at least smaller content creators so yeah protect the little guy yeah you youtube does not do that YouTube doesn't do that. Oh, and uh, here I am complaining about YouTube. They're gonna take down my video. Yay. Or take down my channel. Yay. My, this might be my graduation stream. Thank you. There was a scuff. 
there was lots of scuff, there was lots of, uh, you know, weird, weird quirky videos. And, uh, and yeah, lots of frustration. What if someone builds a building that blocks your view? Oh, no, oh, oh, you've opened the Pandora's box. Oh, okay, wait, listen. Listen up, that's, okay. You can't reason with these people, okay? They're all already building that building. That's a different situation. <laughs> Entirely different. <laughs> that one that one requires violence. Okay, not violence. Because I don't wanna hurt people. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I just wanna I just wanna remove the building from its from existence. From this uh, you know from this dimension. I just wanna remove that building. But not the people. I don't you know, I don't wanna do it when like anyone is around. I wouldn't wanna hurt anyone. But yeah. <laughs> I love, I love how like. <laughs> Shut, okay, wait, who, who asked that? Wait a minute. Oh, shy, shy, you're on my list. <laughs> well, that was a case, no less. She wants to, uh, she wants to hurt the. Uh, what? Yeah, I wanna, I wanna, you know, un, unexist the the building, the building across the street because it's blocking my view. Okay, I don't like that. Wow, I'm kind of still amazed that, you know, I'm, I can make that those ex expressions. Look at that. It's so good. Finally, my goodness. <laughs> Buildings have rights too, Sona. No, I don't. Okay, that one doesn't. That one is violating my, my right to like a nice view from my apartment. So, no. <laughs> oh no, the list. Can I be on it? Well, I mean, do you want to be on my list? On my list of like, you know, people who are on my list? That's, that's essentially what the list is. <laughs> Me? <laughs> yeah, Shai, you're on my list. <laughs> Do Finch Mertz <laughs> plan? <laughs> Someone watches uh, a lot of Phineas and Ferb? Yes. Please don't hurt the building, Sona. No, I'm just gonna dis... D you know, disassemble, disassemble it. Piece by piece. With no one around. I'm, I'm just planning. I'm, you know, listen, listen, my plans evolved, you know, suddenly, like, first it was like, oh, what, how do I, can I buy some e TNT? Can I buy a missile, like, missile and just, like, <laughs> blow it up? Uh, but then it kind of downgraded to, ha, huh, I wonder if I can find, like, an endangered species, uh, like, species of silkworm. And I can like put it there and be like, hey, this silkworm that is endangered lives on this land. You can't build here. You have to, uh, you know, dismantle, disassemble this this building. Just take it apart. And very, very carefully, very safely, because there's a, an endangered type of silkworm. I, I can do it. <laughs> and see, like, see, I'm not, I started with like kind of, you know, a little bit, um, you know, more drastic measures but now i'm just like okay can i can i just simply peacefully let them know hey you can't build here anymore you have to remove this building <laughs> very carefully and uh, by you know with the help of professionals uh oh i'm not going to destroy the building i'm simply doing going to uh, undo it <laughs> doing uh, going to click undo it <laughs> jesus um I hope YouTube doesn't take you down. I I do hope so. I mean, you know, here's here's hoping. Oh look, I can I can move my over. Okay, this is like amazing. I have to say, like, I'm so amazed. I'm still so amazed, like, how VTube Studio works on this computer. <laughs> look, I can just be like, mm -mm. yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take down this building. Like, I'm not gonna blow up the building. I'm just gonna unexist it. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, okay, Dest deconstruct. Oh, deconstruct. Oh, that was the word I was looking for. Thank you. Yeah, English so hard. Uh, I will need all the luck on that rabbit. <laughs> YouTube will find you. Well, I mean, if they find me, if they, uh, you know, recommend my videos, that's fine. If they find me and they ban my channel, that's not, that's not okay. That's very bad. Uh, the building is Sona Chat. It's a Sona Chat meme. <laughs> It was nice knowing you saw that. Yeah, it was nice knowing you guys too. You know, we had some good times. We had some fun times. We had some scuff times. It's okay. It's it's always uh, scuff is always good. You know, scuff always adds to the stream to the content. Uh, but yeah, that's um. Wait, let me just switch to my chat room. Let's hang out. Let's hang out in the other chat room. Oh no, wait, not in this chat room. Wrong chat room. Yay. 
<laughs> As always, wrong chat room. Hello, hi, hi Julie, thank you so much for your donation. My first super chat, lol. Uh, so I don't know what to say, but building. Building, yeah. And thank you so much for uh, being a member of the channel. Just showered my dog, now I'm chasing her while listening to Sona. Ah! <laughs> doggo, doggo on the run. Doggo is like, nope, you will never get me. Wait, let me just like, yeah. Actually, let me turn this off. Yeah. Uh, the best chat room. Yeah, the best chat room. Should I should I pull out my desk? Maybe I can pull up my desk. Sona's desk here. Here we go. Oh, maybe. Okay. Okay. I need I need to be like this. I think. Yeah. Too many rooms. Yeah, the different the different chat rooms. Different chat rooms. The other one is just like my. Uh, this is this is my normal room room chat room. I just stepped out of my office my <laughs> The other my new office the other office. I have so many offices uh, So not undoing okay. No, that was the uh, the okay the office for true crime That was like the same office, but different uh, different side I just like changed the angle of uh, of the camera So, you know because usually you guys see my murder board and this time it was uh, you know It was just uh, it was just the view of the office. So uh, Fabian, thank you so much. Still find it funny how Sona is enemies with a literal building. Okay, listen, this saga will continue. It's gonna continue until uh, this building ceases to exist or I move somewhere else with a better view. You know, that's that's gonna continue, okay? I am not giving up. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, you know, I have a little little war, little civil war with uh, with the building in my neighborhood. It's fine. Dogga runs, but cat kills. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's true. Oh, that's true. Yeah, cats are cats are ferocious. To be fair, this building started exactly. This building started. I was just living my life. I was liking my view. Okay, that that's it. That's why I was just living my life, enjoying my view from my balcony, and suddenly this building just grew and you know just spawned out of nowhere. Uh, and and yeah, you know. It, this is war. I choose violence. <laughs> okay, I don't choose violence. I choose, you know, reasonable measures. But also, I, you know, I don't condone violence. I, but I condone sending a message. <laughs> Breaking news. Detective lady uh, squares up against the building. More at 11. <laughs> Give it up. No, never. Never. And fear will end and it's in, in some way. I will end it in some way. Sona, you took everything from me. Building. Building noises. <laughs> building says nothing because it's a building. But, uh, but yeah. Sona's unbr unbridled, what? Unbridled? Unbridled? Unbridled rage? Am I a bridezilla? Okay, I don't know that word. But yeah. Uh, Sona's unbridled rage was the best way to be introduced to the channel. Yes. <laughs> Whoever came in right now and you were introduced, you were like welcomed, greeted by me uh, going on a rant about, about a building and about violence and about sending a message. Uh, hi, welcome. This is what we do on this channel. Uh, you will see more of that. Definitely. That's an ongoing theme. Uh, maybe Mothman is going to help me at one point. Like de deconstruct that, decommission that building. Deconstruct it, decommission it, everything. Uh, Sona, you took everything from me. Building. Don't even know who you are. <laughs> The building's just like, is that a is that a fly? Is that a mosquito? Like, why? That's annoying. Fact is, you're losing to a building. No, I'm not losing to a building. Okay, you know that's not a that's not a fight. You can, like, there is no losers or winners here. There is just, you know, frustrated neighbors, and you know, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna be victorious. I'm just gonna, you know, just unfair the unfair construction of real estate. Uh, but I'm gonna, I am gonna just move or or something. I don't know. I, I'm not giving up. That doesn't mean I gave, gave up. That means I just relocated. The fight goes on. I'm gonna f be fighting for the this community, the, the building. The original building. Uh, when that Minecraft server is up, we should build a building in front of Sona's base. Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey! Hey! Listen here. <laughs> listen here, I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't allow. That's my server. 
Uh, but yeah, okay, so you guys, uh, as for what's gonna happen this week, uh, we still have... What do we have? What do I have? Uh, what do I do? Let me pull up my... Let me pull up, pull up my schedule. So we have... Uh, <laughs> why am I making those noises? I don't know. Uh, so the new schedule... I didn't actually make a PNG. It's okay. It's okay. I'm gonna just talk about it. Uh, so the new schedule today, it's true crime stream, obviously. And then on Saturday, we have Minecraft uh, with Patreon members and with uh, channel members. Uh, so you guys remember, it's at 7 p.m. Pacific time on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I am planning to do some kind of gaming stream. I haven't decided like what I'm gonna play. I might actually play Minecraft again and um or minecraft legends because it came out i just have to like familiarize i have to like first get a like get a grip of like what minecraft is and like how to play it <laughs> so that's what i'm gonna do on saturday and then on sunday uh i will just do like a gaming stream i'm gonna decide like what to do uh but that's it that's it so you guys i will share the credentials of the server uh soon like likely on the day of um on the day of the stream because the server uh i just kind of made it and it's uh, only active when i'm online and uh you know when i just kind of put it online uh but yeah i'm gonna share the credentials on discord on patreon and uh, i will post a community like in the community tab for um members so for channel members so just look out for that uh there's gonna be posts and I still don't know how to become a member again. Fabian, Fabian, okay, Fabian, listen, little tutorial. Let me, let me just go to, let me see. Okay, so I'm just gonna snip it, this especially, especially for you. Oh, look, look at that, look at that we have. Oh. Okay, let me just save it wherever. Okie dokie. This is uh, the the ultimate tutorial on how to join channel memberships. Oh, look at me. Okay, this is my channel, right? It's here. And you have subscribe. Uh, well, I mean, this is that. That's my view, okay? But you have join. The join button. You probably have like subscribe button and then there's join bat button. And that's the join. Like, that's the membership. So if you want to join the membership, you just go to my channel and you click join. Not subscribe, join. That's the, that's the YouTube membership. Yeah. Okay. And uh, before we end the stream, I just wanted to remind you guys to, uh, speaking of, if you, if you can subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video. Let's get this video to like 100, 200, 500. If you want to see the next episode, you know what? If you want to see the next episode of my true crime stream, uh, click that like button, hit that like button uh, to get it to, let's get it to 500 likes. How about we get it to 500 likes? That's, that would be great. So if you want to see the next episode, 500 likes, hit that like button. And then uh, click that notifications button to be notified whenever I stream uh, and and that's it you know and if you want to join the channel just go to the channel to my main page the channel's main page and click join uh, okay Gilver subscribe thank you uh, thank you so much but okay so you guys thank you so much for today uh, stay safe out there always lock your doors and windows bear your hexes and until the next time bye